What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Vizzy. This is the channel where tech is not everything, it's the only way. So today we'll be diving into the Sony RX100 Mark 7. It's a compact powerhouse that was making waves in the photography and videography world back in 2019. So today we're gonna see if it still live up to the hype. First impression matters, right? The Sony RX100 Mark 7 boasts a sleek and compact design that fits right into your pocket. The build quality is still top notch, giving you that premium, you know, but it's a true blend of style and substance if I gotta put it in my word, my word. But as for user experience, I find that it's hard to maintain my grip while holding it because of its small body. So I add the JJC solid metal grip while at the same time, we're trying to maintain that small compact size that it have. We don't want it to be too bulky. I I also add the Magmod magnetic mount ring on there to pair with the KNF 90X series five stop any filter. Because I don't want to drop this thing, I also top that off with the Peak Design um, cuff wrist strap. Let's talk about what really matters when it comes to this little thing, the image quality. Um, this camera rocks a 20 megapixel one inch type sensor that bigger than a smartphone. I'll probably do a comparison of both. You know, but the versatility of the 24 to 200 millimeter zoom lens delivers stunning photos. Not only that, the dynamic range is impressive for an old timer. I actually took it to the street at downtown Fort Pierce. So I got to give a quick shout out to Lissa. You know, my daughter get to your card before I, I did. Lissa is an artist at art studio there in downtown Fort Pierce. Uh, Lissa allowed me to tour her studio. I got some stunning low light photos and um, low light videos that was very impressive for this little compact thing right here you can go ahead give her a visit so speed matters right that's why we're here the autofocus on this thing is mind-blowing as a point and shoot i did not have high expectation when it comes to comparing it to my newer sony cameras but i gotta tell you this thing was locking on to the subject almost instantly i never missed a perfect shot i take it to bravo zoo in I don't remember where that place is. Melbourne, there we go. I took it to the zoo up there in Melbourne. And, um, I wanted to test out the animal eye autofocus and you know, it works very well. Let me give you some examples. Some of the animals actually are in cages. So it was very hard for me to pull focus using the human eye autofocus setting when obscured by the wires of the cages. So I switched to the animal eye autofocus and call me impressed, just call me impressed. Every shot I took was tack sharp. It maintained a lock on to the subject. Even when the monkeys were dancing around or bouncing around in their cages, I was still grabbing focus. Surprisingly though, the whole time I was using the pop out EVF. At first, I was not a fan of this thing. I could not see a thing out of it. I thought I was getting old. It was hurting in my eyes when I looked through it. It was a little um, distorted till I discovered that there's a little switch on top that you have to adjust. It, uh, once you adjust that switch, it will adjust the magnification to your side. So it's very important, guys. Read the manual <laughs> or do some research videographers listen up <laughs> this thing is not just about photos the 4k hdr videos recording is pretty good out of this thing comparing to what sony's offering right now it has real-time autofocus tracking and that's a rule of thumb for me I'm, i will not purchase a camera without real-time eye autofocus tracking you know your videos are not just in 4k they're also incredibly sharp and smooth this is perfect for me as a content creator or a grab and go person the only drawback if this means a lot to you when it comes to 4k 30 at 4k 30 this does have a 1.5 crop that punch in a little bit but having the flexibility of the 24 to 200 zoom lens you should not have a problem the lowest aperture on this camera is 2.8 at 24 but it's variable as you extend the focal length the aperture changes to like 4.0 4.5 in mag when you max at 200 millimeter one of my favorite thing about the rx100 mark 7 is its portability whether you're traveling hiking or just 
exploring the city. In my case, I'm a chef. This compact companion is always in my pocket, even though I'm scared I bump it sometimes, but because of the build quality of, of what it is, I've never really have that problem. I bump it here and there. You know, I know some of you are gonna say, but yo, Mac, you do have an iPhone that, iPhone 50 Pro Max to take good photo. I get it. You know, I understand, but there's something about using an actual dedicated camera. It makes me appreciate the beauty of photography without computation. You know, allowing me to push beyond your creativity without compromising. I don't compromise when I'm taking photos. I love to take sharp photos and I love to be in control sometimes. The Sony RX100 Mark 7 use a custom NPBX1 ion battery. The batteries are charged in camera via micro USB. To translate that, it's trash for, for a compact powerhouse that shoots 4K log videos. The good news is you can also get external battery chargers that keep up with your user experience. As for photo usage, you only get 220 shots using the LCD monitor, which is accurate. And you get about 210 using the EVF pop-out, as you know, the electronic viewfinder, if you're trying to figure out what EVF is. My recommendation is get at least three to four batteries. Shooting 4K consume a lot of battery power. So digging deeper in the Sony RX100 Mark 7, it's loaded with advanced features like picture profile with the PP S log two and S log three, you have HLG. You have to remember that you're working with a eight bit color space, meaning you don't have a lot of dynamic range. So footage can or may fall apart when you're editing. I find using S-Log2 is way better to work with than S-Log3 using this camera. When I'm shooting in log, which I love to do, I'm all about the raw videos. I set my gamut at S-Log2 and for the color mode, I'll set that at S-Gamut-Cine because most of the LUTs that I use is S-Gamut-Cine. <laughs> so you're still getting great picture quality out of this bad boy without the PP. So you could turn the PP off and just use auto. And I do like the 1080p 120 frames per second over the 220. I prefer the 120. It looks more cinematic. I really don't care too much about quality. Watching most videos on YouTube, you can't tell the difference, especially if the videos are upscale from 1080p to 4K. In my words, it's not just a point and shoot. It's it's a creative tool. Is the Sony RX100 Mark 7 worth? the investment in today's market? That would be a no and a yes. And here's why I said that. Sony has been releasing a Platrough camera that offers more like 10 bit color space, S-Log3, intelligent autofocus, like animal, insect. If you're a camera snob like me, it's more of a collectible or uh, for hobbyists. You can get this thing on Amazon for around 1200. I'm pretty sure you get better bargains on eBay or Mercari or Facebook market for half the price. If you're a content creator, a traveler, or just someone who loves capturing life's moments, this might be the perfect companion for you. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share my channel. I'll catch you in the next one.